Uh, welcome everyone to the AI Research Byte of today. This series is a short and informative talk showcasing uh, the cutting edge research work from ServiceNow AI research team and also other people within ServiceNow. The AI Research Byte, sorry, are open to all, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast paced AI research community. So today's session will feature a 15 minute talk from Patrice Béchard on the latest advancement of Starflow and will be followed by a 10 minute Q&A. So Patrice is an applied research scientist at ServiceNow and has been working in the text to flow team for now three years. He holds a bachelor's degree in physics and a master's in machine learning from Mila. So up to you, Patrice. Thank you, Gertin, uh, for the introduction. Uh, so uh, as she was saying, my name is Patrice. I'm in the Plato world. Um, and today I'm going to share um, the work that we did uh, with the ServiceNow research team called Starflow. Um, the goal is going to be to um, create uh, workflows from sketch images. Uh, so without further ado. Um, so first of all, why would you even want to create workflows? Well, uh, workflows are very helpful, especially in, in platforms such as the Now platform, to um, automate any processes that you, that you might have. It can be a very repetitive task that you repeat every day, or something that you do every time a new, uh, a new incident is created and is assigned to you, for example. Um, so the goal of Flow Designer and Workflows is to enable uh, automation of these repetitive tasks. Uh, and this can be difficult to build, um, basically, uh, Flow Designer is a very, very flexible tool uh, with a lot of options and configurations which you can set. And this can be difficult um, to get started with, especially if you, um, you don't have like a formal uh, programming background or you don't have much ideas about the, the different uh, ideas such as uh, conditions uh, for each loops, that kind of stuff. It's still much easier than programming, but still not as easy as just interacting with someone and try to create the automation for something. Um, the first suggestion uh, that we proposed is be able to prompt a language model in order to create uh, these workflows. Um, this can be helpful if you have simplistic workflows uh, that are not too complex to explain verbally, but as you can imagine, if you get uh, complex workflows uh, with a bunch of nested loops, uh, different conditions, et cetera, it can be quite difficult to explain uh, with like a large paragraph or just like a, a prompt in general to a language model so that your instructions don't contain any sort of ambiguities. Um, one way we can use to, um, to simplify this process is instead of looking at a specific prompt, you sort of just draw the flow that you want on a piece of paper on a whiteboard while you're brainstorming with your colleagues uh, on Miro or Lucid chart or something like that. Uh, so you draw your, your process and you let the LLM do the hard work. <clears throat> so uh, now what is Starflow? Well, um, the framing of the task is relatively simple. You basically have as input a hand-drawn workflow sketch or any sort of visualization of the, of the workflow that you want to, to create. And then uh, you let the model do its thing, just understand what's in the image, uh, do some internal OCR, and convert everything into a JSON representation. And finally, this JSON code representation is going to be ingested into the now platform so that you can run your workflow uh, seamlessly without the need to, uh, to configure anything sort of complex. Um, so very easy, take a picture, create your diagram in PowerPoint or whatever really, and then the LLM translates that to an executable workflow for you, just like magic. Um, well, so now what are the possible use cases for this, right? Like it's kind of a nice idea, but um, like are people actually going to use this product? Well, um, here let, let us go um, uh, together over a couple of use cases why this is helpful. Well, first, this, quite, this speeds up quite a lot, uh, the time it takes to create a workflow. If you, do it every, if you do everything from the UI, it might take a lot of time, get accustomed to the tool. If you prompt everything and it doesn't work the first time, second time, it takes some time just to, uh, to create that flow. If you draw your sketch, and it's without ambiguity, of course, um, you get uh, much faster results, uh, which is good. 
Second is uh, you can empower your entire team. You don't have to uh, to use the IT folks from your team uh, to create the flows or people that are familiar with the tool. Basically, everyone who can draw uh, can create uh, a workflow now. So this is very, very important. Uh, third, um, this is a way to boost accuracy and consistency in the sense that um, basically, everyone can draw their own thing, but you have a single developer that's actually building the tools internally, right? Which is just an LLM that's trying to do this. Um, so regardless of the diagram that you create, you have uh, a large language model, which is going to uh, interpret what's in the image and translate that to a, to a flow, reusing some, uh, some best practices, et cetera, to generate something that's going to be much more easy to maintain over time. Uh, and finally, uh, that's one thing I, I find really nice is uh, basically you can integrate with different workflows found in different platforms. Uh, for example, legacy workflows that you found on that platform or any other platform who has workflows internally, just take a screenshot of the legacy workflow that you have there and then let uh, Starflow uh, interpret that image and push that into um, into Flow Designer, and now everything is migrated to uh, Flow Designer for you on your now on your now instance. So much much easier to manage everything is everything is in one place. Okay, so um, one thing with AI is AI never works if you don't have any data. And how we how we created the data set for Starflow is um, a relatively simple process. You can imagine that it's much easier to create an image from a pre-existing flow than the other way around. So if I give you a sort of one image and you ask someone to create a flow, this can be a relatively tedious task. Uh, but over time, especially with the text to flow project, we've created a large data set of annotated workflows, which we can use to train models to do text to flow. Uh, but now what we did is we reuse this data in order to create a data set uh, that does image to flow by first using the flows and then converting them to image. So for example, over here, we have a JSON on the left and we're going to use uh, a program to convert that to a GraphViz uh, visualization of the flow with boxes and arrows representing your whole process. Um, now, I mean, this looks relatively simple, but obviously we want more complex uh, images, right? So things we can do is create examples that look like what we call digital drawings. So we use platforms such as um, such as Miro or Lucidchart to create these sorts of diagrams, which look like they were created um, automatically on, on a computer, for example. Uh, manual drawings, we basically ask people to, to uh, draw the different flows that they saw, um, either on a whiteboard, on a blackboard, on a piece of paper, that kind of stuff. And we also rendered everything within the now platform itself to give extra diversity, um, to get uh, a, a good set of diverse images that we could sh tell, uh, show the model during training so that it learns to do the task properly. Uh, well, now let's see if it works. So here, what we have is we compare three open weights <clears throat> models, so two variants of Llama, a 11D model and a 90D model. And we also compare them against uh, fixed troll, which is a model which is similar to Llama in terms of size. At the Llama 11D, fixed troll is only 12 billion parameters. Uh, and we see that fixed troll approaches Llama 90D, which is what, uh, eight, nine times bigger um, on this task uh, without any training. So that's off the shelf. If we compare these models now against models such as GPT 4.0 or G Gemini 2.0 Flash, we see that um, the open weights model perform relatively poorly compared to these models. Um, the proprietary models are very good at these sorts of tasks, uh, just off the shelf, no need to train them or anything. Uh, but at the same time, you see that there's still room for improvement, right? We're about uh, 75 to 65 on some of the uh, sample types that we, that we evaluated on. So there's still a lot of room for growth. Now, if we compare it to our fine tuned models, we see that we get much better performance across the board, right? Every fine-tuned model that we that we train uh, perform better than GPT-40 on this uh, challenging task. Uh, 
now let's do sort of a quick dive into um, what are the different mistakes that each of the model is making, right? What does fine tuning bring to the board? First, if we look at LAMA 3.211B, you see that the model makes a lot of sort of dumb mistakes, let's say. First, it doesn't properly use uh, some tables that are related to ServiceNow. So in the image here, we talk about creating an activity. The model is going to create a customer service case, which is obviously not the right table. It's not going to use some important flow logic elements found in workflows. Here, it's going to use iterate instead of a for loop. Uh, it's going to make some logical mistakes here, not having anything after the else, creating a, a add email somewhere randomly in the flow. So this is obviously wrong. If we compare now against GPT, GPT is much better. This looks looks much, much, much closer to what we have here. Uh, but it still does some mistakes because it doesn't know service now enough. Uh, for example, uh, it makes a good guess for the images, but it's not the exact names that we're looking for. And the, the connections that we observe over here, they're not exactly what we define in the image. But finally, if we compare against the fine-tuned models, then we get the perfect results, uh, which is exactly what we want. Uh, now, um, let me uh, show you um, how we currently do image to flow on the platform and what uh, Starflow empowers us to do. So what you see on the top is the current implementation of uh, image to flow on the platform. We first have a image to text model, which is going to look at the, at the incoming uh, diagram. It's going to convert that to a, a summary of the image. Then we're going to do a bunch of difficult stuff, such as searching for components, creating a flow outline, uh, populating the inputs for each of the inputs individually, and then you get your final flow. You can assume, you can see that this is relatively complex, right? Um, if we compare against Starflow, um, all of that uh, complexity in the middle disappears. You then still have uh, a single model, single image to flow model, which is going to use the use input and, and generate a workflow automatically from there uh, without all of the, the complexity and lookups and, and everything that we showed above. And moreover, what we see on the performance side is that um, the sketch to flow models that do the direct tasks, they perform better than their uh, complex decomposed pipeline counterpart. Uh, and that's for every model that we've tested, whether it's a fine tuned model or a GPT 4.0 or just a base model that we have. Uh, now let us show a quick demo of Starflow in action. I'll start this over here and just continue speaking. So what you see on the left is the input image that the model sees. Then the model's job is going to be to create the generated uh, flow that you see on the top here. So we're streaming the text. Uh, so the model is generating the flow um, uh, one token at a time. And then what you see at the bottom is the flow being re-rendered. So basically, we use a generated flow, and we try and, and, and recreate the flow into a, a um, graph visualization so that users can easily compare between left and right and, and assess whether the flow that has been generated is correct. And what we find in, in here is that this works pretty well uh, for the example that we showed. So basically, um, this is a very good improvement compared to where we were, for example, five or six months ago. Uh, OK, so in terms of two takeaways, well, now you you have the ability of just um, create a drawing on a whiteboard, uh, take a screenshot of a, of a process that you've designed in a model board or something. Uh, you send that to Starflow, and that you get the workflow that you can ready to use. Uh, another thing that we find is that you don't need a gigantic model such as GPT-40 uh, to do these tasks. If you have a small model that's fine-tuned on some of these samples, it's going to surpass uh, the larger model that you can get. So much cheaper, much faster, better performance. What do you want more? Uh, and finally, uh, what's next? Well, we acknowledge that um, the model could be improved by more data variety. Um, we've shown that we've created a set of diverse samples to, to train our models. But um, adding more diversity is really the name of the game when you want a language model to be just deployed in, real, in, in the real world. 
and perform well across different uh, images. Um, another thing that we want is have a workflow generation model, which is more context aware. So using tools such as retrieval augmented generation to better understand the instance of uh, the customer where uh, the solution is deployed. Um, and finally, our model is image input only basically, but you can imagine uh, cases where someone would want to provide an image, but also provide some um, some suggestions or some further instruction about how to create the workflow they want to create. So a combination of both image and text as input to create the final workflow is something we'd like to work towards. So thank you everyone for listening. Um, yeah, Captain, for a question. Well, thank you so much, Patrice, for your great presentation. Um, well, uh, if you have questions, please use the Q&A button at the end of your uh, screen. Uh, while we're waiting for questions to appear, I do have a few questions for uh, from myself. Um, I like the whole idea of being able to transfer or migrate flows from one platform to another using this. Uh, is it something we can already use today to uh, migrate flows from other platform into ServiceNow's pa platform? Yeah, so I would say it really depends on the actual platform. Um, as we saw earlier in the different examples that we showed, uh, we have a lot of diversity in the samples we show to the model, uh, but we found that for some samples, for example, legacy workflows,